Right, dear ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here's Pixie, the host of the event today, and welcome to the inaugural session on crafting a successful Ebro grant application. Our panel speakers today are highly skilled, with diverse background, and will share their extensive experience with you. We also have the Ebro Secretariat, who will offer valuable insights to our audience. Well, now I'm going to briefly share with you the background of Ebro. So a brief history about Ebro. It is a global organization dedicated to promoting and supporting neuroscience research and collaboration. Its mission is to foster international scientific cooperation in brain research, advance understanding of the brain. The current president is Tracy Bell. Jerome Sainz as the Treasurer, the Secretary General Sun Jing Jung, and the Secretary General elect Giuseppe Giovanni. The Ebro hosts diversity through its five regional committees spanning from Asia Pacific, Africa, Latin America, Pan Europe, and US Canada. This committee served as the EBRO regional ambassadors to identify regional needs, challenges, and also opportunities. EBRO and its committees are guided by a set of core values like diversity, equity, inclusiveness, and many more. So ladies and gentlemen, every year, the Ebro Secretariat coordinates and manages thousands of funding affairs. They help to ensure the smooth operation of Ebro and support overall organization efficiency. I am very delighted to invite Rebecca to share with you on how to identify the funding opportunities of Ebro and subsequently what happens after an application is submitted to Ebro. The floor is yours, Becky. So thank you very much, Pixie. Um, so as Pixie said, um, so I'm going to talk about how to identify funding opportunities. And the primary source of information regarding all EBRO funding opportunities is the EBRO website, where you can access our grants and training calendars through the career support tab on the main homepage. There, you will be able to view two separate calendars, the EBRO Grants Calendar and the EBRO Schools and Training Calendar. The EBRO Grants Calendar provides an overview of all funding opportunities available for the year. And the first section of the calendar summarizes grants aimed at career development, while the second section focuses on grants used for the organization of events. The EBRO Schools and Training Calendar functions in a similar manner providing a month-by-month -month overview of all available opportunities for training. The grants and training page is also a resource for other useful information, including general funding conditions, access to online reporting, payment formatting guidelines, and frequently asked questions. If you wish to narrow your search, you can directly view the funding opportunities available in your region of residence using the Regions tab on the EBRO homepage. These pages provide a filtered view of the annual calendar, displaying only the calls for applications that are relevant to you. Opportunities are divided in the same way as the main calendar, with sections dedicated for career development, event organization, and training. At a glance, you will be able to see whether a particular call for applications is open or closed, and if open, the application dates. The EBRO website also has a dedicated open calls page, which summarizes grants and training calls which are currently accepting applications. And this can be accessed via the career support tab on the EBRO homepage. There are other ways to stay updated on upcoming opportunities, such as following EBRO on social media. EBRO has a presence on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram and posts regularly about upcoming opportunities, open calls for applications, deadline reminders and monthly funding summaries. You can also subscribe to Ebro Highlights, our monthly newsletter. 
So now I'm going to take you through the EBRO funding cycle, which will explain what happens to your application once it has been submitted. Following the grant deadline, the EBRO Secretariat conducts a series of post eligibility checks. Failure to meet any of the application requirements means your application will not move forward to the evaluation stage. Applications are reviewed by EBRO's five regional committees. Each application is reviewed by two committee members using a set of predetermined evaluation criteria. Examples of such criteria include the quality of the proposal, justification by the applicant, a, regional, a reasonable financial request, as well as consideration of diversity and visibility for EBRO when it comes to organizing events. All regional committees strive for gender and geographical balance when selecting each cohort of awardees. Following approval by the regional committee chair, the EBRO Secretariat notifies all applicants of the outcome of their application. Grantees are required to officially accept the offer and are provided with a communications toolkit to encourage their celebration of their award online. EBRO grants are paid out in two installments. The first 80% is paid out two months in advance of the project or event starting date, with the final 20% sent upon receipt of the final funding report. The exception to this system concerns EBRO travel grantees who are paid in full upon submission of their certificate of attendance to the Secretariat. All payments are sent using the international banking system and EBRO has a dedicated process in place for grantees affected by economic sanctions. At the end of the funding period, grantees submit a detailed grant report detailing their overall experience, including new techniques learned, possible publications arising as a result of the grant and networking benefits. Grantees must also submit a detailed breakdown of expenditures and their corresponding receipts. Opportunities for future funding are continued, contingent on the timely receipt of these reports and allow EBRO to continually evaluate the success of its programs over time. Thank you, Becky, for such a very valuable information, well-guided process. Um, what happened to the ground when we click submit? And now, so audience, what are you waiting for? Don't forget to subscribe to EBRO highlights right after the event, or even you can do it now. And to ladies and gentlemen, have you ever wondered how would someone be on the crest of a wave? Today, we are very delighted for having two EBRO alumni to share their experience that we can learn from their research journey. I will start with the first EBRO alumni. That's Dr. Julio from Mexico. He is currently the principal investigator at the National Polytechnic Institute. He has a remarkable, distinctive list of awards given by EBRO, including travel grants, minority fellowships, return home grant, and EBRO meeting supports. Julio is an excellent panel today to share with you his advice on how to craft a EBRO application. So Julio, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for the invitation for this um, event. I'm really delighted to be here today. And today I will talk about some key points to consider regarding career development awards. These grants include a wide range of possibilities, including exchange fellowship, travel awards, minority fellowships, early career awards, uh, diversity awards, meeting support, among others. So the the major goal of a career development grant is to offer assistance to early and mid-career researchers in order to help them grow their careers by developing knowledge and skills. The very first thing to review is the eligibility criteria as there are requirements for each type of grant. Career development grants provide financial support to pay for a range of activities, including conducting research, writing papers, paying fees uh, for publishing, attending conference, and getting more training and mentoring. So which are the benefits of doing this? Well, researchers can gain from a career development grant in a number of ways, including financial assistance, access to training, as well as 
and increase visibility within their field. Um, these funds can also assist researchers in building a successful track record that can be helpful in obtaining additional funding and developing their careers. But which are the challenges? Well, it might take a lot of time and effort and not every candidate will be accepted. Also, some researchers might struggle balancing the demands of the grant application with the daily work in their labs. So, word of advice, apply, start working early. Also, um, the project description is a crucial part of a grant application and should include relevant information that effectively communicates the proposed research project. And there, there are different applications. Not all will have all the details, but for example, if possible, a project title that describes the proposed, the proposed application accurately should be given. Also, please give a brief explanation of the research problem, including the existing level of knowledge, uh, as well as the significance of the proposed study. Also, it's important to give a clear and a specific statement of the research objective. In addition, a detailed explanation of the research strategy to be used, including search design, data collection, as well as data analysis. So it is important to give a description of how the proposed research is original and advances our, in, our understanding in the, of the subject. Also, how that travel award will have an impact on your scientific career. Um, if possible, also give an explanation of the anticipated outcomes, as well as a timeline de detailing the significant achievements. Here, it is a poster for the SPINE programs uh, at the Marine Biological Laboratory. I appear in a future year's advertisement in my journey towards science. This minority fellowship marked a turning point. So in addition, um, the intended outcomes of a grant proposal should be clearly articulated in order to demonstrate how the proposed research will benefit the research community, the society, or a particular field of study. Your goal should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound, smart. So as you can see with all these grants, there are different um, areas that need to be improved. For example, if your grant is for advancing knowledge, by providing new insight, creating a novel hypothesis or testing current ones, you should explain how the plan research should expand our understanding of a certain topic. Also, this applies for all other um, types of grants. So when describing how the funding will advance your career, it is important to be specific and demonstrate how the proposed activities will contribute to your career goals and objective. It is important to align your career goals with the funding and agency's mission and goals. For example, it's not enough to say that you want to attend in a conference in Italy because it's your dream meet Florence, right? So in this way, so we can have five areas. So the grant money can be used to support professional development activities, such as attending conferences, workshop, or training course. Here, by, by doing so, maybe you will find your new boss in your career. So also this money can help your research activities, such as data collection, analysis, and publishing that can be supported by these grants. Also, you might use the grant money to help your efforts to gain research independence by carrying out pilot studies or by developing new research directions in your lab. This grant funding can be used to support collaboration with other researchers and institutions. Working, finally, for working with senior academics or receiving further training in a particular field are just two examples of the training and mentoring activities that might be supported by that money. So next, we will have 
the grant writing. So getting involved in grant writing can take time and effort, and it's important to approach it with a growth mindset and a willingness to learn and improve. So there are different um, activities that you can do to improve this part. For example, universities, research institutions, and nonprofits may have opportunities for volunteers to assist you with grant writing. Please attend workshops and webinars such as this one so you can get insight about this. Look, uh, join a writing group. Look for mentors who have experience in grant writing and are willing to provide guidance and feedback. Also, very important, consider a start with a small grant or proposal, such as those offered by local organizations or funding agency, preferably in your native language. This can help you gain experience and build your confidence before tackling larger and more complex proposals. Budget is also an important part of a development proposal, um, but this topic will be discussed in two talks from the current webinar, so I will give it to the next um, uh, uh, talks. Um, all, we are almost at the end. Um, references are also important, and by obtaining references and support from mentors, you can strengthen your grant proposal and increase your chances of success. Please find possible mentors who have knowledge about your profession and who can advise you and support your grant application. For example, getting um, a reference from the school dean may not be the best since he might not, this person might not have first-hand knowledge of what you can do. Also, develop a relationship with the potential mentors uh, by attending their talks, presenting new research at conference, on seeking uh, feedback on your work, you know? Um, also, um, with these letters of reference can help you grant application by demonstrating your potential skills and accomplishments in the field of research. So acknowledge the support. So here, there is a picture with Professor Daniel Povinelli in an Ibro school in uh, Naples the, the, this person giving more insights in a few days than most professors gave me in my whole career. So but, um, almost at the end, I would like to thank Ibro for its support during the development of my scientific career. The last funding came in a form of an Ibro meeting support. This grant helped me to bring recognized scientists to an underdeveloped on the represented area in Mexico. The perks of an Ibro successful track record was an invitation to contribute to a mini series um, with Latin America Ibro alumna. The paper just came out. And finally, I would like to give a couple of suggested lectures that might help you with these issues. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Julio. And to the audience, I'm sure that yeah, after you listen to Julio's words, it's clear that nothing great comes easy. Persistent will make you achieve yeah, uh, um, anything. And to our scientific committee out there, moving on, I would like to invite the next panel. She is Dr. Hung. She is currently the head department of tissue engineering and regenerative medicine, Vietnam National University. Hung is an insightful Ibro alumni who will be here to share with you on how she has made inroads into Ibro event organizing. She has been awarded with multiple Ibro travel awards, including travel grants, exchange fellowships, and return home grant. So Hung, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you, BC, for the very nice introductions. And um, similar to uh, Julio's, I also would like to thank Ipro for the continued support uh, since the start of my career as a, an independent um, investigator. And today, um, it's really a great pleasure to be here to share with you um, my experience with uh, applying for funding from IPRO with a focus on event organization. 
Um, so um, event, as Julio mentioned, event is, is the opportunity for you to meet and connect with other scientists. And through that, we can form collaboration. But sometimes uh, you don't have access to the event that you actually want to attend. So you will be the one that organizing it. And IPRO um, has this funding mechanism for you to, uh, to, to make your dream come true, to create the event that you want. And the first point uh, in the application is that you need to identify uh, who will be the host organization. So the host organization must be the working institution or workplace that employ you or your co-organizers. And uh, the detail must be included in your application form in order to demonstrate the ability of the host. So the host should have one or uh, more of the strength below. First of all, it should have the expertise or experience in organizing the event. So the event could be a conference, it could be a school, uh, it could be some form of symposiums, uh, but uh, in the history of this organization, uh, they need to show that they already organized something at, at similar scale. And secondly, uh, they should be able to provide certain form of matching fund. So the matching fund could be in form of monetary, which means financial direct financial support for your event. Uh, they can also support your event by providing the um, infrastructure necessary for the event to take place. Um, and thirdly, um, they should have some form of established network for you to be able to invite national and international speaker. And sometimes uh, the host itself will not be able to provide all of these strengths or all the necessary element. In that case, you should be uh, Try to identify collaborator who can support uh, the organization of your event and uh, provide a necessary component that the host is lacking. And once we uh, have uh, the host uh, identified, the next uh, thing to do is to um, to identify the team who will work together with you to to bring this event into place. So the team, um, the organizing team should have expertise, experience, and knowledge in event organization. And the lead applicant should be an active member in a national or international neuroscience society. So this is an important point uh, because uh, the event funding is not targeting toward an individual. It's very different from the career development plan that Julio was talking about. The event funding is, is trying to uh, foster the um, uh, the strong network of uh, neuroscientists in a region or in a country. Therefore, if you are not an active member of such society, um, the likelihood that for you to get a grant is very low because you yourself uh, don't have the network that uh, to support uh, the development. And uh, beside the lead applicant, we also need uh, the organizing team. So the uh, the team structure will look like this. So in the host organization, uh, you and between your host and your collaborator, uh, you can form a committee that a committee uh, tend to include more senior scientists who will be in charge of the content of the event. And then we have um, the organizing team, uh, which can be divided into the media team, finance, logistic content, and external relationship. And each of the team uh, will have their own job. For example, the finance team will be the one that manage the budget. Uh, including funding that you get from IPRO and can also help you to secure more funding from uh, local um, funding organization. For example, the logistics team will be the one in charge of um, um, making sure that you have the venue to organize the event um, and also uh, help the speaker that come from other country to obtain visa, uh, something like that. And um, uh, and each of the team can also recruit a volunteer from other institution or within that your institution uh, to um, to help take care of uh, all the activity. And um, so another uh, question that you will see in your uh, grant application when you apply for event funding is that uh, who will be your target audience? Who do you want to convey? convey the key idea of the conference or the, fun, uh, or the event to. Um, so your target audience could be um, young scientists in the same field or related field that uh, you are working at. Um, they could be university student, um, or if you are organizing a, an April school, then uh, they could be uh, both student in high school or early career scientists. 
So it depends on the type of event you want to organize. Uh, you, you want to make sure that your target audience will be the one that benefit the most uh, from the event and uh, make, uh, make sure to clarify that in your location. Um, and in the case you already be able to identify who the target audience is, um, your application should also demonstrate that you have the available network to reach out to, to invite these audience because if you are not well connected in your society or in your local um, science community, then um, you will not have enough people attending your event and you will not be able to, to actually make the impact that you want to. Um, so, um, so in order to, to have that network, um, uh, usually it would be helpful for you to also collaborate or work together with representative from a national in, or international society. Uh, and if they can help uh, be part of your organizing team or they can give us talk at your event that can uh, help to reach out to the target audience more effectively. Uh, the next thing to identify in your application is what would be the intended impact of your event. Um, so you should try to demonstrate the impact of your event from local to national and international level. Um, try to answer the question as specific as possible. What would be the impact of the event in your local community? Uh, what would be the impact at the national level and at the in international level? So uh, if your event can, can have um, a very uh, large impact that reach out to uh, country next to you, then uh, that would make the application very attractive. And uh, several advices for you is that I uh, should try to highlight a unique and outstanding characteristic of the event, um, because you know, nowadays with the, uh, after the pandemic, a lot of the event can, can happen online uh, and it's no longer that uh, difficult to organize the event um, with, with uh, a very limited budget. Um, and April also received many of these applications. So uh, what make your um, scientific events uh, the, very important for your local community, very important for, for your country or for, the, um, for your regions? Uh, you try to identify those points. Maybe there's a, an important um, a few of, uh, subfield of neuroscience that is uh, underdeveloped in your country or in your region and uh, you have the um, network that can develop it, but you, you don't have the ability to meet them. So uh, organizing an event to foster or facilitate that field would be uh, reasonable. And uh, try to clarify the strength and feasibility of your proposal, explain why you are the best suited candidate to organize this event. Um, so there's a lot to do, uh, but you don't need to do all these by yourself. Uh, it's always recommended to, to re uh, seek for support uh, when you need to, so that your application uh, has all the uh, necessary element. Um, the support could be from a more senior um, neuroscientist who has a very rich experience in organizing the event. But if you yourself is already uh, experienced uh, I already experienced with uh, this type of uh, uh, event on organizing that you don't need that kind of personal support. Um, but at least you should have the support from the heart organization and they can help you by uh, provisions of meeting venue. Uh, they can also help with technical and logistic support. Um, you can work with the external um, affair department for visa arrangement. And they can also uh, connect you with potential funder or investor who can supplement the funding from April to, to um, provide you with enough budget for your event, uh, or they can provide assistance uh, or network to recruit speaker for, for your events. Um, so that's the end of my session, and uh, I'll be happy to take any questions if you have them. All right, thank you, Hong. Dear ladies and gentlemen, so we welcome your your um to keep sending in the question. So you may make use of the Q and A box. 
send us your question. If there is any particular panelist that you actually would like to direct specifically your question to, please identify by mention their name. It will help us to identify whom to answer your question at the same time. And we'll try our best to answer all of them. And the bring home message from Dr. Hong to you is create, connect, and also collaborate yeah, to ensure your success um, under the support of Ebro funding. Well, dear audience, I'm sure by now you have gained some ideas, tips and tricks of a successful Ebro application. So the itinerary today is carefully planned that while we have the chance to learn from the Ebro alumni, it is only fair when we also hear from for some advices from the grant reviewers. And together with us today, we are graced by the attendance of George Barrero, a committee member of Latin America that George, uh, George Barrero and George um, audience would love to hear from you about what makes an application stands out to the reviewers. And the floor is yours. Thank you. Sorry, I'm not possible now, so sorry. Um, so no I, hope you can see, I hope you can see my screen right now. I'm so sorry. Uh, I have been, uh, I have uh, We can right see, now. yeah, we can see. That's wonderful. Just perfect. Uh, so that's wonderful. So I, so I, I, I'm glad to be here. And actually, thank you, Ibra, for, for the kind invitation. It was, it was definitely a pleasure to be here. So I would just give you some hints about how, how attractive your application um, would be. So first, I think that's important to mention a couple of things that uh, one point that I think I would like to raise here is that how thoughtful your proposals uh, with clear aims and detailed work plans should be attractive to the evaluators. So as pretty much mentioned before, so there should be a significant impact on the uh, local community, national community, or even uh, international community, how your proposal will be quite important for that. So especially regarding if you are uh, so we made an application to a uh, conference grant or even to uh, a symposium grant. What's important is to include a very detailed program. Sometimes we see that even though the applicant, the application is quite nice, but the problem is that the applicants uh, did not submit a very detailed program, which includes um, the tentative titles of all speakers, all speaks, all the talks, but not only detailing the, uh, the speaker, the list of speakers with all the tentative titles is quite important because that's in that way, we can try to see if the uh, if the proposal is quite good at uh, promoting a very local and international impact. What is important is that uh, the realistic plan is your is your proposal is your application realistic in terms of creativity, originality, and how is that going to be managed over time? So sometimes we see that some applications are not realistic in time and also in budgets. So that could play against your application. So let me give you some uh, quite examples right here that what we see when we evaluate some applications that you may see here two different applications. In this application, you have a very broad uh, 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 current research description as compared to this one where we can clearly identify the problem issue, the aims and methods and results and the questions. So if you can try to organize your current research description in this way, so it's much easier for us to evaluate your application. Another way that we see that, that sometimes that the justification is quite broad. Sometimes we see that, oh, uh, we are lucky funds in our country. It's quite nice, it's quite uh, uh, understanding uh, to focus on that. But sometimes you need to go through a little bit more. For example, in this application, we see that um, the person has a very pretty, pretty, pretty much an interest in the, in the Congress, in the conference, and started naming the possible speakers and the possible uh, research areas that will be developed in that Congress. So being as more specific as you can, we make it your application to just stand out over the others. What's also important for us when you try to describe your abstract is to respond to three simple questions, what, why, and how. So what is important? So why it is important and how you're planning to do that? So most important is how you can plan to describe it, to investigate the aim or the project or the issue you are trying to focus right here. And also you need to describe the results that you just gather uh, in order to present at the Congress or the, or the reference. 
sometimes we see that the budget, uh, even though the budget is quite broad, uh, it, it will not be attractive to us. Sometimes we see applications like this, for example, that the budget is quite broad and there is no number of days uh, to be spent in the Congress, how many days we will be spent in hotel, what's the cost of the air flight, the registration fee. So this is a very broad uh, um, budget. But if you look at, for example, this is an application to uh, a conference and a symposium, yeah, as you can see right here, there are different ways that the budget can be detailed here. So for example, the air tickets, the lodging, the number of nights, hotel, so the number of students that will be funded, those students could be national, those students could be from abroad. So all that um, budget must be detailed with a very good justification. So just comparing these two, you can clearly see the big difference between um, these applications. So of course, this application was funded and this application was not funded. So it's really important for you to also to include in additional uh, funding, for example, that could be a kind support from your university. So sometimes universities or, 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 or organizations will fund accommodation or even meals for the speakers and students, so you need to make sure that you can include that information. Also, the career stage, as you can see right here, we evaluate the CV and the curriculum vita in terms of experience and skills that the organization uh, will, um, they, they, have, they are, have experience in organizing uh, scientific events. At some point, we look at the track record. I think it was a question there. So more than uh, evaluating the, the high number of publications, we see the quality of those publications. So we try to match the track record according to the career stage in, in terms of awards and honors as well. We look at as well at grants. So we try to match all the three parameters right here to the track record and that's well how we can evaluate the career stage and CV of our applicants. And of course, needless to say here, uh, so how is application application for a symposium, for example, can attract a diverse and interest audience? We, we do consider inclusion diversity policies. So we look at uh, gender and geographical balance. It's quite key here. Number of males and females making part of the organized committee and also uh, present as speakers. Sometimes we see very nice uh, 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 congress and events uh, 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 in a hybrid mode. So that means that it can increase accessibility. So it's really important to consider all this key topic here to make your application to stand out. So thank you. I hope you can understand um, um, these uh, this key uh, points here we try to make when evaluating all the proposals. Thank you, George. So to the audience, now you will understand how much the process were in detail, yeah? that as a reviewer, as an evaluator, what is their duty and their responsibilities. And uh, one important value that we practice in Ebro is transparency across. So um, of course, we always open for questions. So don't forget to type your Q&A, uh, um, make use of the Q&A box to send us your question, and we will try to address all of them. And dear all, the grant proposal rejection is far too common in the competitive funding landscape of Ebro. I noticed that just now in one Q, uh, in, in one of the questions under Q and A box is about the grant rejection. So of course, to the audience, your funding application was rejected, and now what? I'm sure the audience would like to know and get the guidance on how to deal with rejection. This is a very painful word. However, we are delighted that tonight we are going to introduce you an esteemed committee member from Africa Regional Committee, Rachel, that she shall reveal some common mistakes and reasons for rejection under the Ebro grant application. Rachel, thank you. The floor is yours. Thank you, and thank you, everyone. Um, so my colleagues have really um, explained what you should do when you're applying. And I'm going to summarize by just looking at some of the common pitfalls or some of the reasons for rejection. So one sure way to guarantee that your grant is rejected is to miss the deadline. If you miss the deadline, you can be 100% sure that your grant will not go through. But why do people miss deadlines? Some of the common mistakes that are made by applicants is to start the application in the last minute. And if you start your application in the last minute, it means that the quality of your ap application is going to be compromised. Your budgeting is done last minute, so it shows it's not really coherent and um, it doesn't quite come together. Um, you end up contacting your referees the day before 
or quite close to the deadline. And because they are all professionals, they are all busy, some, some of them don't end up submitting and that's a sure way of getting your grant rejected. Um, and then lastly, you also try to submit it in the very last minute as well. Um, and things happen, uh, Murphy's Law, your computer may crash or you don't have good connection or so it's what's important is as soon as you see a grant that you're interested in make sure that you start applying for it in in really good time the second common mistake that is made by applicants is ignoring the eligibility criteria and before you start applying for a grant ask yourself this question am i the right fit Am I eligible? First of all, grants are rejected if they are not in the field of neuroscience. We at Ebro will only um, fund neuroscience related activities. So if it's not in neuroscience, don't, um, don't apply. And the second thing is grants are rejected if, if the application doesn't fit the core or the priority. If the project or even the place where the project is being done doesn't fit within the criteria or the, the call that has been given, then your grant will, will, will not be accepted. Then lastly, the grant is rejected if the person applying is not eligible. And I'll give an example. If it's an early career uh, development grant and you are a mature, um, um, advanced career person, you do not actually fit into that call. So if you as the person are not eligible, then your grant will be rejected. I'll move on to the next thing, which is um, the issues of budgeting. Grants are rejected if, you're, if you produce or if you present vague, incoherent, and unrealistic budgets. And some of the common reasons for rejection of budgets is if you inflate and you give us unrealistic costs, your, your, you should remember that your application is reviewed by people that are in your region, they are aware of the costs. So you have to be as realistic as possible. We don't really ask for any, um, any quotations or anything, but we can see when figures are inflated and unrealistic. The second thing is unclear allocations. People that say general materials, 3000, stuff, 1000. What general materials? Itemize your budgets, make sure that everything is clearly stated and how much it costs. Budgets that are incoherent with the amount that is requested. So we see in your budget that you require 600 euros, but suddenly your request is for 2000 euros. What is the remainder for? It's important to remember that as Ebro, we do not fund in excess of requirement. Then the fourth and uh, very common mistake is just basic mathematics. Sometimes we see that it's 200, 100, and 200. That's supposed to be 500 but suddenly your, um, your total is coming up to 2000. And that is a sure way of um, uh, getting your grant rejected. I'll go on to the fourth point, which is failure to follow guidelines. And common pitfalls are ignoring simple things like word counts or page counts, um, using incorrect formatting from what has been given in the guidelines, like fonts and margins and structure, um, and sometimes not attaching things that have been requested like CVs and publications, et cetera, or even leaving some sections unanswered. If you want to get your grant uh, accepted, follow all the guidelines and make sure that you answer all sections, especially mandatory sections. The last uh, common mistake I'm gonna discuss sums everything up, poor writing of the actual proposal. One thing to remember is that when you apply for a grant, there are hundreds of you sometimes, or so many of you. And at the end of the day, it all comes to competition. So sell yourself in the as strongly as you can, in the best light possible. Common pitfalls when people are writing proposals are a poor scientific argument or justifications to support the proposed research or activity. Your grant is reviewed by people in your science that are experts, professors, researchers, and your science should come through and shine through. Um, poor organization of thoughts and lack of logical flow of ideas, make sure that you write logically. Number three, poor mechanics of writing. 
there's nothing that frustrates people than reading a piece of work that has got a lot of mistakes that could have been avoided. So make sure your spellings, your grammar, your punctuation are all, um, all good. And then the last thing is a general failure to sell your story or uh, to give a strong personal statement. So I'll repeat again, sell yourself as strongly as you can. I think I'll end here for today, but I'm happy to chat to you also in the question and answer session. Thank you so much to all our panelists tonight. And uh, to the audience, Besides the panelists tonight, we also have um, Fabio and also Michaela, who are also in the leadership of the regional committee. And uh, they're happy to help to answer some questions. You'll find that we keep answering your question now. And of course, now we come to the most exciting part of the event. That is the live answer Q&A session. So we are going to pick some questions, those that we have answered, but uh, for those really important and um, those worth to mention tonight, I'm going to highlight. So maybe I will first uh, invite Michaela. Michaela is currently the chair for US Canada Regional Committee. And Michaela, I found that there are a few questions actually is concerning some of the um, scientists residing in US Canada, but they are with different visa holders. They're also concerned, uh, how do they know whether are they qualified to apply for the EBRO grant under US Canada? If you can help us to answer their question. Okay. Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today. I don't know if I have all the answer, the correct answer, but I can tell you that um, a visa, um, as long as you have a, a working visa, so you're allowed to stay in the United States, you are not disqualified to apply uh, to our grant. We don't use this as a criteria for a living, excluding uh, candidates. For us, what we are looking in our uh, grants are uh, people who fit the goal of EBRO, and that means helping minorities or underrepresented minorities to access neuroscience. And so that is your the, the requirement. And you have, of course, depending what kind of grant you're applying to or schools, uh, we will uh, see if you are fitting that criteria, but it's not the visa. Of course, if you're illegal in the United States, maybe you are not okay, but it's not the, the visa who will dis, um, discriminate you. Thank you, Michaela. I'm sure that your answer actually brings a lot of confidence to those uh, scientists tr currently trained in US and also in Canada. Thank you so much. And now I would like to actually direct one question to Fabio. So to ladies and gentlemen, Fabio is, uh, he was the chair of the Pan-Europe Regional Committee, but due to his reason, appointment so um he with his busy schedule he passed over to another committee member and we are very delighted to have fabio to answer one question that is really important tonight is fabio with your experience dealing with many applications the the applicants tonight would love to know how often are we going to provide feedback to those are non-successful applicants, what is your stand? Are you are we at the capacity to provide feedbacks to those uh, unsuccessful application? Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, I also answered this question in uh, in the chat box, here, but um, uh, probably you, you you may remember Pixie that we discussed this and uh, or, or maybe. Uh, that was a long time ago, but yes, that would be uh, useful, I guess, to the, to the applicants. Uh, of, of course, it requires time and additional effort uh, by the, you know, by the reviewers, but uh, that's something that we, we could do, probably not for all the different types of uh, grant applications, maybe for those a little bit more complicated, so meaning those that are more tricky, you know, to the applicants. And um, yes, so like when, when you submit a paper to a, to a journal and you get your paper rejected or, 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 or you have a, a request for, a, a, you know, major changes uh, and then the, the reviewer try to, to explain to you how, what do you, you, you're supposed to do to, you, to improve your, your paper. So uh, yes, that's something that we consider 
uh, which does not necessarily mean that this is going to happen in, uh, you know, to, today or tomorrow, but we were actually thinking of providing a, a service like this. Thank you, Fabio. I have to echo what you mentioned is because that's correct to the audience. For example, during this uh, current travel grant offer for the attendees to attend the World Congress in Granada, so um, we actually, each regional committee received hundreds of the applications. I think it is impossible to provide individual feedback, but I think that Fabio mentioned is, let's say, for the Ebro school or for the event organizer. So maybe that is to the capacity that we are able to provide individual feedback that you can improve your future applications. And now I would like to actually direct the next question to, to Julio. That is, um, there's one question raised by the audience tonight. It's about the funding for the minority community. Maybe the, the audience may not, uh, may have missed your point. If you can help to stress on how actually Ebro also consider and also in supportive for the minority communities in neuroscience with, uh, research. Uh, thank you so much. Um, for example, for the SPINE program, um, well, all the course is fully funded for a given number of, of students each year, but two of those places are fully um, funded by EBRO. So the EBRO committee is the one that uh, works to to pick the best candidates for that um, a specific course. And so uh, in this way, uh, you know, it, it could, like for example, when I went, uh, there were one person from Latin America and one person from Africa. So we were the, the two uh, people that were chosen for that specific course. And so, um, in most courses, uh, the, uh, as I understand, works this way. There is this uh, little space for minority fellowships in addition to other regular um, fellowships. So, um, and, and so I think that they are, the, so we are um, measure, the, our, the assessment is different from the other candidates. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, so I hope that of course um, Julio will be here and you can always able to look for him and you can actually uh, privately send him an, any question if you want to know more about the topic here. Yeah? He will be an excellent panel to give you a good answer on that. And the next question actually I would like to direct to Rachel. So Rachel, one, one candidate actually mentioned about if the research um, support or any uh, funding opportunity is available for applicants from Uganda. I think it is. So maybe it comes to about maybe publicity, whether the news of the Ebro funding is reachable to the countries in the regional of Africa. All right. All right, thank you. Um, so yes, it is available. And usually when our calls come out, um, they are published on the Ebro website. They are published on our social media sites as well. Um, and we do try to circulate them around. So you can look around, you can look out for um, um, look out for calls on our social media sites, but also you can go to the Ebro website and just look at open calls. Thank you. So uh, I would say the audience, let me uh, re-emphasize. Please apply for Ebro Highlights so that you won't miss any opportunity funding available by any regional committee. And of course, I would like to invite George to help to answer one question is um, some of the audience would like to know about what actually the evaluators will, will uh, evaluate. What are the aspects that you would li like to look for for those applications applying for travel grants? for travel grants per se, to attend any conference which is out of the country. If you can help us to share some ideas. Yeah, of course. I think that's, I think that's, I think that's, it's important to be as subjective as possible because like, like you said, uh, 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 we, we received in the last hybrid travel grants application, like over 250 applications. applications. So that means that it, the application must stand out at some point. So I think that the key points here is that 
sometimes you need to be as specific as possible in your description of your current research. How is that going to be matched to your abstract? Because we try to compare and match everything all the way through the application. Sometimes we see as well that the CV, uh, the students, the applicants will not include it, uh, uh, information in terms of publications. Sometimes it's easy as well to, it's important to be a first author on a paper, to be less author on a paper. Uh, the number of uh, the number of papers is not that important. So the quality is much more important. So we look at the impact factor of papers. So we look at the participation of the applicants in those papers. So uh, also I think that's important that some students, they, they, the applicants, they also uh, detail some extra curricular activities. So like uh, participation in schools, like uh, 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 outreach activities. So I think that's quite nice to include that kind of information. And also I think that's important that sometimes we see a multiple applications from the same lab. Uh, and, and we have to consider that when we select all the candidates because it's it's hard to, to uh, select multiple candidates from the same lab because we are missing all the other good candidates we have seen in the, in the applications. So I think that it's important that you can justify pretty much well your application. You need to get to know the topic of the, con the, the Congress, the event you want to attend to. I think that's important. It's not it's not a good and attractive to describe in a very broad way, in very general way, because in this way you are not going to get the attraction of your of the evaluators. So just make your application to stand out, make as specific as possible, and just try to match all the, the information that you can put here, and that will be a good correlation with your budget. I think that's quite important as well to have a very good justified budget. Thank you, Josh. And I would like to come back to Michaela. Michaela, I have to mention that there are two of the Ebro alumni tonight. They're actually being awarded the uh, return home grant. But I think that, uh, I think, yes. And I think that that is not available anymore, but instead we replace it with the Rising Star Award. Can you actually enlighten us? I think this idea was started in US Canada Regional Committee. So if you can help to, um, um, bring us some idea why do we brand it, rebrand it as the rising star? So the idea started because in the United States, it's a little less likely that people will leave North America to do their postdoc and come back. And the focus for our region is more to support Native Americans, Blacks, Hispanic, so minorities. Um, women, okay, uh, who have been maybe neglected in the past years. And so uh, we decided that uh, rather than have this funding go lost because no one apply as a returning, we decide to focus on the reality that we have here in the United States. And so we decide to change the name and rebrand the grant and use it as a <clears throat> rising stars also because this can definitely help launching the career on new PIs, having new award, even if the funding is not uh, big <laughs> in terms of uh, the amount, it is a title and does help and can be uh, be seen and perceived also in future application for grants as a uh, one notch okay or a sign of approval and sometimes even small funding uh, can make a difference so that's how we decided to change the name and the name was the rising stars because we are thinking to um individual who are at their starting of their career not necessarily young but they are rising okay that's the idea so i hope this answer thank you yeah that's the the beautiful spirit that we would like to uphold yeah so we are uh, rebranded so i think that the return home grant is no longer available for the brand the grant is still there but we change it to the rising star fellowship instead yeah so um well uh to all the panel yeah i i am actually um really want to um say that good things have to come to the end I'm sure that you have a lots of still a uh, uh, a lot of uh, burning ideas that you would like to ask our panel speakers. Feel free that you know their faces, you know their names, so you can reach out to us or reach out to the Ebro Secretariat tonight. So and then uh, so we will try at our very best to address all your queries to ensure that you'll be part of the Ebro community. And the best news is you do not need to subscribe any membership to apply for Ebro opportunity, any grant opportunity. 
So for that, um, before I end the session, I would like to invite Becky to share with you the Journal of Ebro and also the coming Ebro World Congress. Hello, everybody. Um, so thank you for, for coming to this webinar. It's been very informative and thank you again to all of our panelists. Um, so I'd just like to take a very, very brief moment just to draw your attention to our two journals, um, Neuroscience and Ebro Neuroscience Reports. So for those of you that are unaware, um, these journals are actually how Ebro is able to do what we do. So all of the proceeds that we receive from neuroscience actually go directly back out into our funding programs. So anytime you submit to neuroscience or you submit to Ebro Neuroscience Reports, you're actually helping Ebro to continue funding neuroscientists like yourself. Um, we also have our World Congress that's coming up in um, Granada in Spain in September. So the early bird registration deadline is tomorrow, the 30th of May, but normal registration remains open after this. So if you have not registered, please do so. And we look forward to seeing you in Granada. And I'd also like to point out that we have just launched two calls for nominations for our regional committees and for our early career committee. So you can find this information on our website. There's a dedicated article for this. So if you would like to join one of our regional committees and help evaluate programs, or you'd like to join the early career committee and help younger early career neuroscientists, please either approach your um, local neuroscience society to put in a nomination on your behalf, um, contact our committee members, or you can also self-nominate and the forms for that are available on our website. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So the bring home message is, don't forget to subscribe the Ebro highlights and share with us your exciting scientific findings by sending to our Ebro journals. And of course, continue to support us and meet all of us at the coming Ebro World Congress in Granada, Spain in September. And for that, I would like to extend my appreciation to all the panels tonight to help to answer the question for our Ebro community out there. And uh, I hope that everyone was blessed with good health and happiness. Thank you and bye. 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 Bye.